Today we are going to talk about lesson 94. And lesson 94 has to do with probability. And what we're going to spend most of our time on is talking about the probability of dependent events. Now we're really used to doing the probability of independent events. Um, let's see what that is just so you're like aware of what that is. A probability of independent events is the probability of an event occurring not affected by any other kind of event. For instance, uh, when you toss a coin. Every time you toss a coin there's a 50-50 chance that it's going to be heads or tails. And that's not going to change. It's always going to be 50-50 chance it's going to be heads or tails. Um, if you have a, a die and, and you roll it, every time you roll it, it's the same chance that you're going to get a 1 is that you're going to get a 6. That 1 doesn't go away. You don't have less chances to get a 1. It's just exactly the same. Okay, the spin of a spinner. If you have a spinner and you, you hit it and you spin it around and you spin it around, every time it goes around, heck, it could, hand, it could, it could land on one every time. It could land on two, it could land on five, it could land on five, six times. There's no limit because it is independent. Okay, now, what is dependent? Dependent events are events that do depend on the previous outcome. So, the probability in dependent events is influenced by something that happened before. For instance, if you have a jar of marbles or a bag of marbles and they're all mixed colors, okay, you draw, or they call it drawing marble, you pull a marble out of that bag and you don't put that marble back in, okay, then you draw another marble out of the bag, okay, so it's a different number of marbles in the bag and depending on what you draw as far as a color, you may have eliminated some color choices out of that bag. So, because there are less marbles in the bag and because the mix is different, you're going to be doing something different to figure out the probability of drawing marbles out of that bag. And it really has to do with the fact that you have drawn one marble and not replaced it. That's the big deal right there. You didn't put that marble back in the mix. It didn't go back in the mix. If it had gone back in the mix, it was, if you'd put it back in the bag, then it would be independent. But the minute you take it out of the bag and you don't put it back, then it is dependent because it depends on what marble you took out of the bag and then how many marbles are left in the bag. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit more about that. What about predicting probability when two dependent events occur? So. Uh, for instance, if you have two things that happen, um, and we'll just we'll, we'll go right here. The probability of dependent events occurring in a specific order is the product of the first event and the recalculated probabilities of each event after that. Now, there's a lot of words, and I know that I want you to write them down, but I do want to give you some examples. Here is a good example two red marbles, three blue marbles, and four green marbles are in a bag. Okay, so we have two plus three is five plus four. There's nine total marbles in that bag. If one marble is drawn and not replaced, there you go. So right now we know it is dependent. We're talking about dependent probability because we did not replace the marble. So if one marble is drawn and not replaced, then a second marble is drawn and again, not replaced. Okay. What would be the probability that both marbles would be red? So we start, we look, okay, we've got red, two red marbles out of nine. So the very first draw, the probability is what you would expect two out of nine. But we're always going to assume that when you draw those marbles out, you pulled out a red one. So you would expect the two out of nine. But then when you pull the second marble, you have one, maybe one red. You're always going to assume that you have one less red marble. You're going to assume that you pulled that red marble. So then it's one out of, and now you only have eight marbles in the bag. So then it says up here that we have to multiply. So we take 2 times 1 is 2, 9 times 8 is 72, 
when you reduce that, it's 1 over 36, okay? And that is the dependent probability of drawing two red marbles in a row out of the same bag without replacement. We're going to do the blue. If we have three blue marbles, so it's three out of nine, we get that one, okay? Now we assume we pulled one of those blue out, so it's two out of eight. Now if we had pulled a third one out, okay, it would have been one out of seven. And then the next one would have been, yeah, zero out of six. And that would have been no chance at all that if you drew four times in that bag, no chance at all if you drew four times out of that bag, that you'd get a blue every single time. Because you're assuming that you got one, two, and you had that third one, they're all gone. But we're looking at just drawing twice. So if we draw twice, we have three out of nine, times two out of eight, three times two is six, over 72, reduce is one twelfth. Now we got the last color is green. There were four green marbles four green marbles, so we're, you know, we're doing the same assumption, four out of nine. Then one of those marbles was green, then you pull that marble out, it was green, you pull another marble out, it's going to be green. So three out of eight. Then four times three is twelve over seventy-two, reduce, it's one-sixth. Now these are separate events. First one we're just looking for red, second one we're just looking for blue, last one we were just looking for green. You would only do this one at a time, okay? Now, this is, this is actually a scientific probability. It is not what you actually are drawing, you know? If you sit there and draw marbles out of a bag, I can't tell you that you'll get exactly that. But we're talking about, we're not talking about experimental, we're talking theoretical probability here. Okay, we're going to try it with drawing cards. So, if you were to draw two cards out of a deck of cards, one right after the other, and no cards are put back in the deck, that's without replacement, what is the probability that they will both be aces? Well, now you've got to know a little bit about drawing cards out of a deck and what cards are and um, how many cards are in the deck and all that, don't you? Questions to ask and things to know about cards. How many cards are in a deck? And how many aces in a deck? Just so you know it, there are four suites, or suits, I guess you could call them. There are four suits of cards in a deck. There are 52 cards in a deck. And therefore, because there are four suits of cards, there are going to be four aces, because there's only one ace in each suit. And if you doubt that, I've got decks of cards you can sit down and go through and see. So, if there are just four aces and there are 52 cards, then we draw two cards. Let's see, what would the probability be? Well, first card being an ace, there's four cards that are aces out of 52 possible cards. So I think it would be four out of 52, right? Well, we don't put that ace back in that we drew out of there. So then second card would be three out of 51. If we do a third time, it would be 2 out of 50, and a fourth time, it would be 1 out of 49. And if you do a fifth time, theoretically, it would be 0 out of 48, which would give you 0 chances. You can't get 5 aces out of a deck of cards because there's only 4. So theoretically, that's how it works. So here you go. 4 out of 52 does reduce to 1 13th. 3 out of 51 reduces to 1 17. So to figure our probability, we have to go down here and multiply. 1 over 13 times 1 over 17 equals 1 over 221. So the probability of drawing two aces out of a deck of 52 cards, one right after the other, is 1 and 221 times. Okay? And this says the probability of both cards being the, is the product of each dependent event. So. Here's your final answer. So I wouldn't bet somebody that you could draw two aces out of a card deck because I think you might lose. Alrighty, well thanks a lot for listening and if you have any questions be sure you ask me. Otherwise I will talk to you later.